Time now for a look at what new films are hitting theaters this weekend. We're joined live by film critic Richard Krauss. Richard, as always, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Oh, thanks for having me. All right, so let's start off with Where the Crawdads Sing. Yeah, this is a new film produced by Reese Witherspoon and based on a really popular novel, a best-selling novel that I know a lot of people hold near and dear to their hearts. Unfortunately, the movie doesn't really hold up as well as the book does. So you have the story of a, when we first meet her, uh, a young girl named Kaya. Uh, she lives in the North Carolina marshlands with her family. And then one by one, her mother leaves, her brothers and sisters leave, uh, leaving her alone with her abusive father. When he dies, she essentially raises herself in the marsh, uh, learns about life from the nature around her, has to feed herself, all that sort of thing. The only major contact she has with the nearby town is with two young guys from the town when she's a, an older teenager, uh, Tate and Chase. When Chase ends up dead, they accuse her of the murder and she has to go on trial for her life. And there's a lot of elements here that could have worked really, really well. It could have been a steamy southern gothic story wiped with murder and sex and all sorts of things uh, would have had a little bit of fire to it could have just focused on the intriguing central character this autodidact who figures out life on her own in the marsh but instead we get a sleepily paced movie that never really uh, lifts off the screen so where the crawdads sing I give it two and a half out of five stars and it's in theaters this weekend all right a wildly popular book but not a huge fan of the movie no. Uh, yourself. So, also, you're not a. You're, you're sometimes skeptical. I understand from uh, titles that rhyme. <laughs> But tell us about Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. I don't always love uh, titles <laughs> that rhyme. It always seems to me that uh, the filmmakers are being a little bit too cutesy. So I think of like From Prada to Nada or Good Luck Chuck as terrible movies that had titles that rhymed. Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris, so rises above all this uh, with a, a story about an English widow in the 1950s. Her husband was lost in the in World War II. And one day when she sees a beautiful Dior dress at one of her aristocratic clients' homes, she decides that she's going to go to Paris and buy a dress from Dior himself, even though that would cost you know, about the equivalent of what she might make in a year. She's willing to scrimp and save and make it happen. She gets to Paris, and then some unexpected things happen. And I won't tell you any more than that, but uh, it becomes a romantic comedy. It becomes uh, a story about organized labor. There's a lot of things going on in this story. Uh, but at the heart of it all is Leslie Manville as Mrs. Harris. Uh, she is the heart and soul of this story and keeps some more predictable elements uh, alive and and. And interesting. And this is the kind of movie that is a feel good movie that wants you to feel better about things on the way out of the movie than you did going in. And by and large, it does that. So I give it three out of five stars, and it's in theaters this weekend. All right. So if you can get past the title, it might be a good one to check out. <laughs> That's right. So finally, tell us about Hallelujah, Leonard Cohen, A Journey, A Song. Yeah, this is a new documentary about Canadian icon Leonard Cohen. It's playing in theaters right now. And it takes a look at his life and career through a very specific lens, though, through the lens of his, well, now most famous song, probably Hallelujah. And it's interesting to note that the song took seven years to write. There's hundreds of verses to it, most of which have never been recorded by anyone, even though the song has been recorded over 300 times. And for a song that has been recorded so many times, it's interesting to learn that it was rejected by the record company when he first handed in the entire album, Various Positions, in 1984. And uh, there's uh, the record company head, Walter Yetinoff, said to him, Leonard, we know you're great, we just don't know if you're any good, and refused to release the album. And this, uh, this documentary really gives you a sense of Leonard Cohen, the man, the musician, and beyond that, the spiritual seeker, someone who was always looking uh, to really understand life and express that in his art. So I give it four, or I give it three and a half out of five stars. It's called Hallelujah, Leonard Cohen, A Journey, A Song, and it's in theaters this weekend. All right, such an iconic song and some good options mm -hmm. to check out this weekend. Thanks so much, Richard. Thanks for having me, Scott.